Hey everyone, welcome back to the Glass and Barrel Wine channel. This is part one of my 10 need to know wine phrases. Our first term is acidity. All wines have acidity because grapes contain acid. The primary acids in grape are tartaric acid and malic acid. As the grapes ripen, some of the acid is lost. Generally speaking, the warmer the climate, the lower the acidity of the wines that come from it. This Man Vintner's Chenin Blanc that I'm drinking, although it comes from Stellenbosch, which is quite a warm climate, still has buckets of acidity in it. Acid is very important in a wine. It gives the wine freshness and crispness, and without it, a wine would be what we call flabby. I can feel the saliva rushing into my mouth the moment I've had a sip on this. Now, how you perceive acidity is really different from person to person. Some people love that acidic touch and others just find it too harsh. Personally, I love it. And this Chenin Blanc, which is really light bodied and bursting with citrus flavors, is absolutely awesome. Wine term number two, dry. A dry wine is essentially a wine that has almost no residual sugar left. What happens during fermentation is that sugars in the grape are converted to alcohol by yeast. A dry wine is a wine where the yeast has eaten up pretty much all the sugar. Like acid in grapes, how much sugar there are in the grapes depends on the climate and how long it has taken for the grapes to ripen. Depending on the kind of style of wine a winemaker wants to make, he can stop fermentation earlier or later in the process. For example, if he wants to make a very sweet wine, he'll stop fermentation earlier on, before the yeast have had a chance to eat all the sugar and turn it into alcohol. The Chenin Blanc I'm drinking at the moment is a dry wine. Term number three, nose, also called bouquet. When we taste a wine, after we've observed our wine, we then go on to smell it. That's why you see people swirling the wine in their glass. It's to let the aromas in the wine open up and come wafting out of the glass. Now some wines will have a very pungent aroma that you can smell from about this distance. Others you have to stick your nose right into the glass to get anything. And some almost have no bouquet at all. Other factors that affect how you perceive the nose or bouquet of the wine are the temperature of the wine. For example, if the wine's very cold, those aromas will have trouble opening up in the glass. One solution to do this is very gently for a few seconds, just cup the glass in your hands and that will help the aromas come out of the wine a little bit. The glass you're also drinking your wine from can have a massive effect. Generally speaking, the larger the glass, the easier it is for the wine to swirl and release those aromas. So wherever possible, rather drink from a larger glass than a teeny tiny glass. Term number four, terroir. Terroir is basically the place in which the vines are grown. This isn't just the geographical location, but also the soil type that the vines are grown in. Terroir is also influenced by weather patterns as well as overall climatic influences. You might have heard someone say, this wine is a great expression of the terroir. That basically means that all those tiny little aspects that make up terroir can be tasted in the wine. Believe it or not, the soil type that a vine is grown in really will go on to affect the end taste of the wine. For example, in the Mosul Valley in Germany, the slaty soils that the Riesling vines are grown in are expressed in the wine. And this can give the wine a slaty and kind of wet stone taste, which I think is awesome. On to term number five, tannins. Tannins are that aspect of the wine that makes it feel like the inside of your gums is sticking to the inside of your mouth. I think I touched upon this in my last video. As you can see, I've poured myself a new glass of wine. This time I've chosen a Tempranillo from the wine farm Balea, 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 I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Tempranillo is a grape that comes from Spain and is the primary grape in the wine Rioja. Tannins come from the skins of the grape and also somewhat from the stalks or the pips of the grape. That is if the winemaker chose to throw the stalks in with the grapes during fermentation. Grape skins are also responsible for the color of red wine. 
If there was zero skin contact with the grapes during fermentation, you would actually make a white wine or a very pale rosé out of red grapes. It's complex. If you ever read a tasting note online or on the back of a bottle of wine and read the term complex, you might be wondering what this means. A way to describe it is complex wines are kind of like complex people. What you see isn't necessarily immediately what you get. It takes a little bit of time to get to know the wine and often the aromas really open up the more you sip. Kind of like a complex person. I'd say this Tempranillo definitely has an aspect of complexity to it. Every time I go and smell the wine, I'm picking up on new aromas every time. At first you might think this wine is purely a kind of red fruit, berry driven wine, but then I'm starting to pick up on herbaceous and even a slight banana skin smell, however weird that sounds. And then on the palate, there's a lot of black pepper and spice, a slight leatheriness to it. And then those fruit flavors are definitely a little bit more subdued than they were on the nose, but you can definitely pick up on them. But more in a sort of masculine way than a fruity and seductive feminine way. I hope you enjoyed part one of my 10 need to know wine terms. Check back next week for part two, where I'll be telling you five more essential wine terms. Please subscribe, leave comments, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter. And see you next time.